If you'd like online business explained to you in a way that you can actually understand, go to latenightim.com forward slash explain. It's completely free and I made it just for you. Now, how about an episode? Episode 119. Late Night Internet Marketing. This week on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast, we talk about what's coming from Google in 2017. We also talk about how to do math if you're an affiliate. What's that affiliate site that you're building really going to be worth? All this and more on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. The Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. You've been working for somebody else. But you want a business to run yourself. You want to know how to start where to begin can you get out your comfort zone my friend yes you can do it right when it's late at night at the end of the day your dreams burning inside so keep it up and you will find that you're building your business one night at a time and now Broadcasting late at night from a little studio in the big state of Texas, your host, Mark Mason. Hey, hey, I hope everybody is having a fantastical, magical, awesome day as we approach Christmas here in the United States. Actually, it's Christmas all over the world, but I know depending on where you are in the world, you may or may not be celebrating Christmas. So whatever you're doing over the holiday, I think that's totally awesome. And I hope it is wonderful for you. Uh, My friends in China, they they'll be celebrating Chinese New Year uh, in next month. And so uh, it's kind of challenging for me because in my day job, I work with a lot of people from Asia and we're out in December and then they'll be out for Chinese New Year after the first of the year. So that makes a really just that's really complicated from a logistics standpoint we have to make sure we have things covered but whatever you're doing right now and this month and next month i hope you're having an absolutely fantastic time i hope you had an outstanding 2016 and i'm personally very excited about 2017 before we get to all the things that are going to happen in 2017 we'll probably cover that next episode I did want to handle a little bit of listener feedback. And now, and now, it's time to hear what listeners just like you are thinking. Late night listener, listener feedback. 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 So I'm getting a lot of feedback from those of you who listened back in episode 103. You're anxiously awaiting the late night affiliate course. It is coming. It is taking longer than I thought it would. It always does. I, I need to learn. Uh <laughs> You would think I would learn this lesson, but course is coming. Material is being created. I'm very excited about how it's shaping up. And if you are interested in that course, there will be a number of beta spots available when it first opens up at a dramatically reduced cost. So if you want to get on the list for the opportunity to be notified about that and considered for a beta slot, you can check that out over at latenightaffiliate.com. Right now, I'm hoping to get some beta testers in there sometime next month. That will be in January. We'll see how that goes. I'm struggling through the holidays trying to get that created. And just, uh, you know, in full transparency, we'll talk about this in a future episode, but this is one of my major goals for 2017, not just the release of that course, But the promotion of it, creating webinar campaigns and Facebook ads and all that kind of stuff, we'll be talking about all of that on the podcast because, of course, this is an internet marketing podcast and I'm going to be doing internet marketing to promote that course. And so it'll make an interesting case study for us to assess throughout 2017. The issue, of course, is in order to promote a course, you've got to have a course. And so... I'm working on that, and I will keep you updated uh, accordingly. I wanted to give a particular shout-out to to those of you that have been trying to hold me accountable on that, Um, particularly most recently Rick Smith. Rick, thank you very much for checking in on me on the Twitter. That's really great. It's uh, 
it's great to know people are listening and care about what's going on here at Late Night Internet Marketing. So thanks for all the shout outs, guys. This week, in the world of internet marketing news. marketing news. Okay, so it's that time of year in internet marketing news when we start getting all of these predictions for 2017. I really enjoy these posts because some of the predictions are just goofy and I don't agree with them, but some of them really resonate. And I want to call your attention to a post over on the Moz blog. I'll link to it in the show notes by this guy. I love this guy's name, Gianluca Forelli. <laughs> Gianluca has an excellent post, I think, SEO and digital trends in 2017 that he posts on the Moz blog. And he does a couple of things that I think are completely awesome. If you go check out that post, one of the things that you will see is a graphic that he put together of all the official Google algorithm updates, all the businesses and companies acquired by Google or their parent company, Alphabet, all of the kind of topics of the major posts on the Google Webmaster blog, all of the main Google patents that were published and products that Google released into the marketplace. And he plots all of this as a function of time on a graph and, and, and tries to get a holistic picture of what is Google up to. And Gianluca's conclusion is, I think his top level conclusion is Google continues to move steadily towards what he calls a mobile only world. Hey, I, I think this is for real. I use mobile myself personally way more than I did two or three years ago. And if I hit a website that is not mobile friendly or doesn't have a good mobile treatment, I'm out. And Google knows this, and they are really starting to talk about going from what they have now, which is a desktop first index, meaning that desktop sites have priority in the index. And that's sort of the way they're thinking about the index when they com when they crawl the internet and compile the index to a mobile first index. And what that means for you, I think it means two things for you, the blogger. One thing it means for you, the blogger, is clearly you need to have a responsive, a truly responsive, outstanding website going. If you go look at latenightinternetmarketing.com, my website, and you pull it up in your mobile browser and your iPad and your desktop you're going to get exactly the same website, but it's going to be rendered differently depending on the size of your screen. And if you want to see how this behavior happens, go to latenightim.com with your browser open as wide as your monitor and then do this on your desktop and then grab the edge of the browser and start slowly moving it in. Grab the right edge of your browser and start slowly closing down the window size from left to right and make it more and more narrow. And when you get all the way down to as narrow as it can be, then it's about as narrow as an iPhone or a you know, Samsung Galaxy. And hopefully it won't catch on fire if you do that. That's a little Galaxy joke there for you note people, sorry. Um, but um, when you do that, you can see that the website moves around. It changes the elements to fit the size of the screen sort of as you're dragging it. And that's known as responsive design. It's very, very important for 2017. And, and quite frankly, it's been important since 2015 with the rise of what was called mobile Geddon when, uh, when Google started penalizing sites that didn't have a mobile version and calling them out in Google Webmaster Tools and letting them know that their website web pages were not mobile friendly. That's going to be increasingly important and outside of the U.S., it's even more important because elsewhere in the world, people are relying even more strongly on mobile websites. And so it's really important that you have a responsive theme. Now, I've gone through several iterations of the blog, and I've had blogs hand-coded and so forth, and I have decided wholeheartedly on this elegant themes theme called Divi. It's a framework. And I love it because it allows me to rapidly prototype a page 
and make it look like anything that I want. I can do landing pages and custom blog pages or whatever I need to do. And it's super easy to use. It's all drag and drop now, and it's highly recommended. We'll talk about Divi in a future episode some more, but if you want to take a look at that, you can find it through my affiliate link at latenightim.com forward slash Divi. I really, really like this theme. I've used many. I, I used Thesis in the past. A lot of you are aware of that. But this Divi thing is I'm converting all of my sites to Divi. I really, really like it. And it handles this mobile responsive thing very well. And you can see that if you drag your browser window back and forth like I was describing on latenightim.com. So that mobile thing is going to be one thing. I think the other thing that's going to be increasingly important, and this is something that I haven't tackled that I need to research for you and cover in a future blog post, is this issue of accelerated mobile pages or AMP. Um, AMP is a technology that Google and Twitter and others collaborated on. And basically what it is is a definition for stripped down HTML HTML, of course, is the language that your website uses to communicate its web page to your web browser. Your web browser reads the HTML and makes a pretty page. The thing is that when you're doing all kinds of fancy stuff like we normally do on regular desktop blog pages, we there's a lot of overhead to that. There's you know heavy styling and images and all this kind of stuff, and all that eats up bandwidth. And typically for mobile... The bandwidth is typically on a worldwide basis slower than it would be on the desktop, and it's also usually metered. And so Google, for mobile experience reasons, they want uh, stripped down code. Also, usually mobile processors that are doing the rendering are more lightweight than the desktop processors. You're not going to have a four-core i7 in your phone like you do on your laptop. So all that to say that Google has the standard and has been excited about accelerated mobile pages. You'll see it referred to as AMP. And their search engine will request an AMP page from you oftentimes if you have it. Now, I have not implemented this on latenightim.com, but um, this is something I'll be researching for you in the future. We'll cover a future episode on AMP. But basically the idea for WordPress would be you install a plugin that creates these stripped down versions of your web pages and makes them available and compatible with the AMP, this sort of AMP handshake or protocol. And when Google requests a page uh, from a from a customer that is on a mobile browser, from your website, if you've got an AMP page available, they'll return the AMP page to the searcher if they're on mobile, and it'll load much faster, and everyone will be happy. Google will be happy because it'll give the searcher a better search experience. The customer, the searcher will be happy because they got the content they were looking for faster, and you will be happy because Google will preferentially, at least in theory, um, include your pages in the search engine rankings um, because it loads faster and provides supports this user experience that you can achieve with AMP. There are lots of issues with AMP. I mean, there's been all kinds of implementation challenges. And if you listen to Yoast, um, Yoast prefers the plugin by automatic, the AMP plugin by automatic. And that plugin actually uh, is, you know, that's the same people that write WordPress that plugin automatically creates AMP versions of all your pages, but there are issues. It doesn't play well with the Yoast plugin in the sense that it ignores some of Yoast settings. There are issues with getting Google Analytics tracking code onto the AMP versions of the pages and all kinds of stuff. And so as a result of that, Yoast has written a glue plugin that glues the Yoast plugin to the AMP plugin. And all of that to me sounds like a giant mess. So I haven't done anything with AMP yet, but I think in 2017, AMP experimentation will definitely be on my list. And I'll let you know um, how that goes over here at latenightim.com. But for now, what I can tell you is that for 2017, 
Gianluca's prediction seems sm- spot on to me, and that is that mobile will be increasingly important in 2017. And whatever your plans are for creating affiliate websites or working on a bigger blog, a legacy blog that you have, you better be thinking mobile first. It's time to get to work building your internet business one night at a time. time. So this week, uh, my buddy Andrew Hansen released an outstanding post over at andrewhansen.name that brought back to mind a topic that I haven't talked about in years. And I used to call this affiliate math. And if you look back on the Late Night I Am blog and you Google around, I'll try and find some of the old posts and put them in the show notes. Um, I used to, to, to publish this information that helped you understand how to predict how much money a particular website that you were building would make. And I called it affiliate math. And I thought this was particularly important because we just talked about this easy SEO strategy last week where we're talking about, you know, if you're third or fourth on the list uh, in Google, you can expect sort of 10% of conversions or less. And so an easy way to get more search engine traffic is to push your site up on page one stuff that you've got at the bottom of page one, you should move it to the top. And all that has to do with the number of people that click on your links. Well, if you expand that as one of the many conversions that you need to make to make an affiliate sale, you can start to get an estimate of the kind of money that you can make with an affiliate site And in Andrew's example, he particularly talks about Amazon, but this is generally true with any affiliate website. So let me take you through this and kind of help you understand if you're thinking about building affiliate websites and you're wanting to know how much money can I make? And notice that this is different than how much money will I make? I'm not saying how much money you will make. And I'm not saying how long it might take you to make the money. I'm also not taking into account the fact that you might do something to screw everything up. So this is just some kind of guidelines that you could use to maybe build a spreadsheet to kind of figure out how much money you should invest in your website. Okay, so you're going to build this website on some topic. And let's say, you know, we talk a lot about blue suede shoes on this podcast. So let's say you're going to build a blue suede shoes affiliate website. And when you do your keyword research for blue suede shoes, you find that the top four or five keywords about blue suede shoes have approximately, let's just say in round numbers, if you add up the number of searches per month that your keyword research tool tells you, it tells you that about 10,000 people a month are searching for the top three terms in blue suede shoes, what whatever they are, best blue suede shoes, most comfortable blue suede shoes, or other kind of blue suede shoes terms. Maybe there's a particular brand, um, Nun Bush blue suede shoes. So let's say you have a page that you're going to build and it's targeting some keyword terms that are very closely related in the top three of those have 10,000 searches total. If you were able to get to the third position in the search engine results where you were the third site listed, maybe the number one site was Amazon, the number two site was Walmart, and you were number three. For a number three listing in the SERPs, you could expect uh, something on the order of 10% of clicks. Now, of course, you're going to optimize your your title tags and so forth to try and, and your description, like we've talked about in the past, to try and get the best search engine click-through rate that you possibly can. But let's say you get 10%. That means that when you get that amazing page that's targeting a search term with 10,000 potential keyword searches that you might get a thousand of those searchers to your web page. So that's a, that's pretty good. And you know, you can scale these numbers. Maybe you're targeting something with a thousand. So at 10%, you would think maybe you could get a hundred 
people to your website based on that one page. And of course, when you first publish that page, it's not going to be ranking number three. This is after the fullness of time when you've written excellent content and it's better than all the competition and you've built backlinks and and so forth. And now you're ranking number three with this page after you've done all that work. And maybe this takes months and months. Okay. But eventually you're ranking number three. And when you rank number three, you're getting 10% of the traffic. And in this example, you're getting 10% of 10,000 visitors and that's a thousand visitors. So you get these thousand visitors and then, um, of those thousand visitors, if you write an excellent article and you use great principles for copywriting and it adds a lot of value, people love your article and it's it's engaging. And based on that engagement, they they um, click through to the product, then you are looking at a click through rate of, you know, maybe 30 percent. So of those thousand visitors maybe 300 actually click through to the affiliate offer that you're promoting. Now, if you're promoting an affiliate offer from Commission Junction or ClickBank or some affiliate outfit, a lot of times there'll be earnings per click information that you can get. So let's say that you look at the earnings per click information and you see that people who promote that offer, they're getting something on the order of, say, 50 cents per click. So you send 300 visitors in a month from that web page, and you can expect, on average, to make 50 cents per click. That's going to be $150 for that page for that month. So let's say you target, you have multiple pages on your website that are of this quality. Let's say you target, you have 10 excellent website pages, and they're all of this nature, then you could start to build a case that this is starting to look like sort of a a, a, a website with $10, $150 a month pages on it. You're starting to talk about a $1,500 a month website. Now, in a lot of cases, um, you won't be, you won't have that much traffic to work with. You'll be starting with a thousand visitors. And in a lot of cases, you're going to have a hard time ranking these keywords because you're new at this or whatever, and it might take you a very, very long time to get skilled enough or to beat the competition. But what we're talking about here is what is the end game potential of this website? If you work on a website for a year, what is its potential? And so that's why I often talk about um, the number of pages that you want to target for an affiliate website is not five or 10 like we used to do in the old days. It's more like 50 or 100 pages because you want to multiply this effect. Your website needs authority and you want the maximum chance for ranking these things and getting the search engine traffic. But basically, you can have a content plan then for your website And for each piece of content, you can look at the top three keywords that you're likely to rank for for that content, add those up, multiply it times 10% because you're hoping to rank in the top half of the third of the first page, and then multiply that number by 30% because you're hoping that you're going to be able to write a good enough article that 30% of those page visitors will click through to the product and then multiply that times the earnings per click. Now for Amazon... If that's what you're doing, Amazon's super tricky because, and Andrew covers this in some detail in the article, I strongly encourage you to go read that in the show notes over on andrewhanson.name. Um, he talks about you know what his experience has been on Amazon, and the bottom line number he comes to is so- something on the order of 50 cents per click as well. That's one of the reasons I used it in the example. And this is confusing because it depends on the price of the product that you're promoting, it also depends on other products that get get purchased because people who click on through your link to Amazon, you get credit for anything that they buy in the next 24 hours. So it sort of depends on what the behavior of your traffic is. But Andrew's experience is in the range of 50, 50 cents a click. So every visitor that he can get over to Amazon, um, a little cash register sound goes off in his head and he gets about 50 cents. So... That's the right way to think about this kind of topic. So when you're asking yourself, 
can I build a six figure affiliate website, right? Then you can go do that math backwards. You can say, okay, well, my pages, I think that I'm going to be able to build some pages that make, let's say, a hundred dollars a month, right? And so if I've got a a hundred dollar a month, if I've got a website and I learn how to build pages that the page itself generates something on the order of a hundred dollars a month, and that's twelve hundred dollars a year from one single page, well, you can very qu- quickly understand to make a hundred thousand dollars, you need an eighty page or so website. So you can kind of figure that out. So when people ask me, hey, can I build a six-figure affiliate website in a year? The answer is typically, well, that's really hard because, you know, for when you think about average affiliate performance, we're not talking about six figures from a single website in a year. That's not really typical. Does it happen? Absolutely. I'm aware of people who have shown me evidence that they're making thousands of dollars from, you know, sort of on the order of $25,000 a month from an affiliate website. And depending on the niche, it can be more. I mean, Pat Flynn publishes his affiliate commissions from his website, and he's got tens of thousands of dollars in affiliate commissions from single products that he's promoting on that website and on the associated properties. So it is totally possible when you've got this massive following to to do a lot and it's totally possible in particular niches to do a lot even if you don't have a large following but we're talking about the average joe blow kind of person who's building an affiliate website maybe for the first time we're not talking about a six-figure business in the first couple of months and this is the math that supports that so hope that's hope that makes sense to you. I'll flesh this out a little more in the show notes over at late night. I am.com forward slash one, one nine. And you can go over there and take a look. And if you've got questions about this or my math, or you want to challenge it, or you didn't quite understand, just drop me a line over at late night. I am.com forward slash one, one nine. Or if you want to leave me a voicemail, go over to late night. I am.com forward slash connect and hit the voicemail button, and you'll be talking to me right with your um, PC microphone through a tool called SpeakPipe. That's super cool. I look forward to hearing from you and hearing what you have to say about that, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. All right, so that wraps it up today. I've got a few more presents to wrap here as we roll into Christmas And I hope you make some fantastic, amazing progress on your business between now and the end of the year, because 2017 is going to be a barn burner. Ciao. You can do it right when it's late at night. You've been listening to the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. Be sure to visit LateNightPodcast.com today to leave feedback for Mark. Download special bonus content, access the show notes, and more. See you there. Until then. Until then, go and make some great progress on your internet business. One night at a time. One night at a time. So I had the worst, I had the worst Amazon surprise Christmas experience. I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys or not, but I, I'm sitting, uh, my wife wanted an Echo for Christmas. And so I ordered one, an Amazon Echo, this thing that you talk to. We're Apple people. So I've been resisting buying this. Keep, I keep thinking Apple's going to come out with a competing product. They haven't. So finally I gave in. I ordered an Echo from Amazon. My son was playing Madden football or something on my phone, and I get a notification from the Amazon app that says, your Amazon Echo has been delivered. He comes running into the study, Dad, Dad, your phone says there's an Echo here because he's a technology geek. And, uh, of course, my wife's sitting right there, and she's like, an Echo? And so Christmas was blown. 
So, so we go out to the porch and sure enough, the echo was there. And I have to tell you, this thing is totally freaking amazing. I mean, I'm an, an engineer and I've heard about how cool these things are. They're really cool. And I've already gone off and gotten a wink hub to use to control some of my home automation. And so I've got some lights on this thing now. So you can say echo, turn on the family room light and so forth. And it'll do that. I hope I didn't just turn on all your lights. Sorry about that. But um, it's just really neat. So if you're considering one of these uh, Amazon Echo type products, I'm very impressed with it. I really like it. I understand they're going to be integrating with Sonos pretty soon, which is cool. I'm a Sonos guy, so I'll be able to control the music in my house with voice. I think this is a really cool thing. And uh, Merry Christmas early. Eh, Technology got me that time. Ciao. Late night internet marketing. Hey, it's Mark again. I wanted to tell you one more time about this absolutely free resource that I have for helping people who are trying to get the big picture for internet marketing actually get started and understand what all their choices are. If that's not you, there's no more content. You can skip to the end. But if you're someone who came to this podcast because you're searching for how to get started online, And you just can't cut through all the noise. I get it. That was me in 2007 when I was trying to get started. There were so many people throwing offers at me that I really couldn't even understand what all the different business models were. I couldn't understand how money moved around on the internet. And I couldn't really get a grip on what direction I wanted to go in so I could figure out how to move forward. I've created a free video resource for you just for that purpose at latenightim.com forward slash explain. In several short videos, I just explained to you what internet marketing is all about and what online business is all about and the different options that you have for starting an online business. There's nothing to buy there. You just sign up for access and you get the videos just like that. So if that's interesting to you or if you know someone who's in a same situation, Send them that link, latenightim.com forward slash explain. And let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what people are thinking that are in the exact same position that I was in more than a decade ago in 2007. In some ways, it seems like yesterday. And in some ways, it seems like an entire lifetime ago. Again, that's latenightim.com forward slash explain. Late night internet mark.